Banning or online suspension is considered to be one of the most stringent moderation techniques that is adopted to maintain the health of our online communities. While banning works, prior work has also noted that banned individuals frequently return to the platforms to continue their malicious activities. That leaves us with the question, if bans can be evaded, then how do we maintain the safety and integrity of our online platforms? With this in mind, we conduct the first data-driven study on ban evasion. We define ban evasion as temporarily disjoint or non-simultaneous operation of two accounts by the same entity. We focus specifically on bad ban evasion where users return to continue malicious activities. Let's look at the current ban evasion life cycle. A parent account is created and engages in malicious behavior. Eventually it is banned by the moderators. The users then go on to create a new account, a child account that again engages in malicious behavior and is brought to the attention of moderators. Moderators carry out a rigorous investigation to establish an instance of evasion and then eventually ban the child account as well. To give an idea of how big of an issue ban evasion is, all the platforms that you see on the left have acknowledged ban evasion as a challenge. This isn't limited to social media platforms, but also information and knowledge sharing platforms like Wikipedia and Khan Academy. A recent security report from Reddit highlights that only 10% of ban evaders are reported by mods. This clearly indicates the limitations of current detection infrastructure used by moderators. We want to envision a future where we move from the currently prevalent identification strategies that are manual and resource intensive to ML assisted identification strategies where ML algorithms collect evidence for the mods and proactively make recommendations regarding ban evasion. This still allows the final decision to be made by the moderator, but the turnaround time is reduced considerably. Additionally, Currently, moderators rely on a lot of sensitive information like IP address, which pretty much gives away the location of the user, and partial credit card info for detecting ban evasion. Can ML models do good without leveraging any private data? With the aim of enabling this vision, we have curated the Wikipedia ban evasion dataset, which comprises about 8,500 pairs. Each pair has a parent account that engaged in malicious behavior and was banned, and then a child, child account was created to continue the malicious activity and was banned eventually. Along with the metadata regarding these users, we also collect all the revision and edit data for each of the users. Please feel free to check out the data set at this link or using the QR code. Our data set curation process starts from, an, from identified sock puppet groups in Wikipedia. In Wikipedia, sock puppets are defined as multiple undisclosed accounts controlled by the same entity. The sock puppet groups are identified after rigorous manual investigations by Wikipedia users, moderators, and check users. In this screenshot, they emphasize on evidence, both behavioral and technical for decision making. Starting from these identified sock puppet groups, we first create, oops, we first create a list of sock puppet accounts with no overlapping usernames. Following this, we order the accounts within each group based on their creation time. In this sorted order, if there's a pair that has a parent-child relationship in the sense that the child account was created after the parent was banned and the parent account was banned immediately before the child account was created, we take that pair to be the ban evasion pair. For this work, we only focus on the first instance of ban evasion per sock puppet group, effectively considering a maximum of one evasion pair per group. At various points of the ban evasion lifecycle, we address crucial prediction, detection, and attribution tasks. As soon as the parent account is banned, we ask the question, can we predict if the account will create an evasion account in the future? For this, we use other malicious accounts that were banned around the same time as the parent account in our dataset as negative samples. Once a new account has been created and the account has made a few edits, we want to detect if this account could be an evasion account of a previously banned account. 
For this, we consider the normal accounts that were created around the same time as the child accounts in our data set as negative samples. Finally, an account has been flagged. We want to use all the edits that have been made by the child account to identify if it is an evasion account. And if that is the case, we want to attribute that account to its true parent. For this task, as negative samples, we find a bunch of malicious accounts that were created around the same time as the child account and treat them as, as the negative samples for this task. So effectively for each of these tasks, we have hundred thousands of negative samples to appropriately contrast the behavior of ban evaders. We will use these negative samples for a characterization analysis and also as training data for building prediction and detection models. Now that we have the data and have curated meaningful negative samples, let's characterize the behavior of ban evaders. We first start with the question, how are future ban evaders different from other malicious accounts that are not known to evade bans? If there are characteristic differences between these two sets of accounts, moderators can use them to estimate the likelihood of an upco upcoming evasion and better inform their decisions. We find that ban evaders stay active for a longer duration and make more edits on more unique Wikipedia pages. This seems to be the case because ban evaders have a lot less, uh, are a lot less explicit in their behavior, right from, right from having fewer instances of inappropriate usernames to fewer instances of swear words, informal words, and sexual words. Moving on, we are interested in characterizing the behavior of ban evasion pairs against temporally aligned malicious pairs. First, we ask if ban evaders are careful enough to not use similar usernames. While one would imagine that ban evaders would try hard to hide themselves, turns out that on average, ban evaders have a high username similarity across child and parent accounts. Here we have the normalized Levenstein distance between the parent and child username strings. And we use that to compute the username similarity. You can see that in the plot, there is a higher representation of ban evaders for smaller values of distance, indicating more username similarity. Next, we look at a more involved question. Uh, we get it that most of them keep similar usernames, but are ban evaders careful enough to hide their editing behavior? Again, we find that on average, ban evaders demonstrate a notable similarity in their behavior across the parent and child account when compared to random malicious pairs. They edit the same Wikipedia pages while using similar vocabulary and maintaining similar distribution across psycholinguistic categories. This indicates that most of the ban evaders are somewhat lazy when it comes to hiding themselves from the moderators. But these inferences are based on average statistics. What about those evaders who succeed? How is it that they change their behavior and can remain hidden for a longer duration? To answer that question, first we need a metric of success. We define evasion pairs that have children that remain active for a longer duration than their parents to be successful, whereas pairs with child accounts that remain active for a shorter duration to be unsuccessful. Following this definition, we find that successful ban evaders are careful enough to use fewer swear words and more objective words to remain hidden from the moderators. They also have considerably different usernames when compared to unsuccessful evaders. We will now move on to using what we have learned about ban evaders to build ML models to detect and predict online ban evasion. For our first task, we aim to predict whether a malicious account will create an evasion account in the future or not. This information can allow moderators to remain vigilant for future evasion attempts by the user under investigation and could also help them decide an appropriate penalty. We start with split we start with splitting our data set into train and test set to imitate a real world setting where models trained on past data can be used to detect future instances of ban evasion. We do a temporal train and test split uh, based on the creation time of the parent. The first 80% pairs end up in the train set and the latter 20% in the test set. We use a collection of temporal features that include aspects like duration of the account, uh, edit related features like number of Wikipedia pages edited and the rate of edits and linguistic features like new and sentiment scores 
All of these features are used individually as well as collectively to train a logistic regression classifier. And the classifier obtains an AUC score of 0.778 using all the features together. For task two, we use the first three edits that an account makes to detect whether a newly created account is a normal account or an evasion child account. This task could allow flagging of potential ban evaders so that their actions can be monitored closely. For this task, since a pair of accounts are involved, we consider temporal features like time gap between the ban of the parent and creation of the child, edit related features like similar overlap between edited pages and linguistic similarity measures like semantic similarity of contributions, overlap in vocabulary, similarity of loop representations. We finally train a logistic regression classifier. And as you can see, uh, we obtained really good detection scores in AUC of 0.922. Finally, for task three, we use all the edits made by an account to detect whether or not a malicious account that is about to be penalized is a ban evasion account or not. Using the same set of features used in task two, we train a logistic regression classifier that provides really good AUC scores. Interestingly, the probability scores of this trained classifier can also be used to rank the potential parents of, a, of an evasion account. And when we do that, we find that the MRR, which is mean reciprocal rank for this attribution task is quite high, which demonstrates correct matching between a potential child and its parent. In our discussions with Wikipedia moderators, the band time evasion detection and the attribution task is the one that will be the most useful to them as a, as a tool. Based on our research, along with Zen Jiang and GOO, we are working on a tool that allows Wikipedia moderators to analyze and assess suspected ban evasion behavior. I'll show you a quick demo of the tool that we have developed while working with members of Wikimedia Foundation. Let's say we have two users, Jill and Jack and A. Laffentine. The users, usernames seem quite dis, uh, dissimilar, but we know from our data set that these are indeed ban evasion pairs. When the moderators click on the submit button, they can see that these two accounts are ban evasion pairs with a probability of 0.87, which is quite high. But I want to understand why the model thinks that way. So when the moderators click on visualize metadata, they can see that even though the usernames seem quite dissimilar, these accounts have been editing similar pages, particularly pages like Paul Davis, sorry, Paul, Paul Rose and Victor Davis. For a closer look, the mods can analyze the most similar sentences added by these two accounts and notice that they both talk about the talk about a person with the same last name. Who, the person was born in the same city and the person is affiliated with rebellion groups in both the cases. Our system also allows the moderators um, to visualize other aspects like vocabulary overlap, Luke similarity, and sentiment score for these two accounts. Effectively, instead of going through the edit behavior of a suspected pair manually, this tool would allow moderators to collect crucial evidence automatically, and that too along multiple behavioral axes. This evidence can inform their decision while thinking of a penalty for the user. In closing, it is imperative that we find the right balance between vigilance and maintaining open and accessible nature of online platforms. This can be done by keeping the moderators in charge of making the final decisions and using tools to supplement the, their decisions and not replace them. Thank you for listening. Uh, please check out the dataset and the paper at this link and feel free to reach out for extended discussions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Goro. Uh, now it's time for questions. So we have th about three minutes for questions. So audience, please feel free to unmute and ask questions if there are any. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, kick things off and then others can jump in. So Gaurav, uh, can you tell us a bit about uh, specifically about what the data set contains? and how others may benefit from it. Right. So 
So, um, so the data set, uh, as, as I was trying to say uh, in, in the presentation, the data set is not restricted to just containing the metadata of these users uh, that have been identified as Banavision pairs, but everything else about these users, which includes all the edits that they have made on all the Wikipedia pages out there, and also metadata of these edits, not just the content that they have added to the platform, but metadata like uh, when, when was this added? And that allows for a lot of uh, time-based studies to happen on the data that, that has been curated and is available via this link. Awesome. And how can others, let's say the attendees on this particular session or someone else, how can they benefit from the data? Right. So there are several interesting uh, extensions that we can imagine. For example, when curating the data set, I kind of mentioned that we are only using the first instance of evasion within a group, but it's also possible to consider multiple instances of ban evasion within a single group. And that tells us what's the, uh, that, that gives us data to uh, make inferences about how ban evasion improves iteratively. So right now we are studying if a user was banned, how do they improve their behavior when they create the new account? But a more interesting question that a future study could look into would be, let's say this happened once and the user came back to create a new account. Now how their uh, behavior has improved and that uh, can inform uh, multiple tools that we can build to detect and curb ban evasion on online platforms. Awesome. So it seems like many interesting follow-up works can be made based on this. Awesome. Uh, any other questions? Yes, Alex. So I was just wondering, so obviously Wikipedia is, is quite unique in, in the way that, because it deals with, with, um, with, well, not facts necessarily, but, but written, written information pieces. Um, and that's one of the ways that you're making sure that, you know, we're, we're dealing with the same person twice. Um, how do you think this might transfer to, to other platforms where, um, the communicational aspects are, are quite different and where, uh, you might not see the same kind of text come up because it's more social or it's focused on other type of information. Right. That's, that's a great question. And, um, so when we were doing this study, we were constantly thinking about how it generalizes to other platforms. And we did not want to have like a Wikipedia specific focus because since this is the first study on ban evasion, we wanted some set of generalized insights. But even on platforms like Twitter, when people are not trying to share or influence information, uh, I would believe that there are users who specifically interact with a particular set of users, regardless of whether this is like the first account that's been banned or the second account that's, that's been banned. And there are these entities that control several accounts to spread propaganda. Uh, that could be like a political pro propaganda or so someone just trying to uh, defame someone else. Um, so, even in the context of Twitter and platforms like Reddit, I would imagine that there are, there would be a lot of similarity in the content that these users are uh, adding and also similarity in uh, how they communicate with other users on the platform. Uh, 